urinary incontinence refers to the involuntary loss of urine. It can significantly impact a person's participation in social activities and their emotional well-being, but often goes unreported due to embarrassment. It is often mistakenly considered a normal part of aging, but effective treatment is available. It is crucial for nurses to assess clients for symptoms of urinary incontinence and promote effective treatment. Potential complications of urinary incontinence include skin breakdown, urinary tract infections, and social withdrawal. Nurses monitor for these complications and provide interventions to mitigate them. There are several types of urinary incontinence called stress, urge, overflow, and functional incontinence. Stress incontinence is due to weakened pelvic floor muscles, causing leakage during activities that exert pressure on the bladder, like coughing or laughing. Urge incontinence involves a sudden, strong urge to urinate followed by involuntary leakage, often triggered by bladder irritants such as caffeine or nicotine. Overflow incontinence results from incomplete bladder emptying, leading to continuous or intermittent dribbling. Functional incontinence occurs when physical or mental impairments prevent timely access to a toilet. Risk factors include aging, obesity, neurological disorders, chronic constipation, pregnancy, and childbirth. The pathophysiology of urinary incontinence varies with the type. Stress incontinence is often related to weakened pelvic floor muscles due to childbirth, pelvic surgeries, obesity, or hormonal changes. Urge incontinence results from involuntary bladder contractions. Overflow incontinence is typically caused by obstruction like benign prostate hypertrophy or can also be caused by nerve damage. Diagnosing urinary incontinence involves urinalysis to check for infections and bun and creatinine levels to assess kidney function. Imaging and urodynamic studies assess bladder function and measuring post-void residual amounts helps determine bladder emptying efficiency. Clients are encouraged to keep bladder diaries that record fluid intake, voiding times, and incontinence episodes to help determine the causes of their incontinence. Medications for urinary incontinence vary by type. Anticholinergics like oxybutenin help with urge incontinence by relaxing bladder muscles. Alpha blockers such as tamsulosin are used for men with overflow incontinence to relax bladder neck muscles and promote complete emptying of the bladder. Estrogen therapy can improve urethral tone in postmenopausal women with stress incontinence. Other treatments include bladder retraining, pelvic floor muscle exercises like Kegel exercises, and medical devices such as pessaries or urethral inserts. Surgical options may include sling procedures or bladder neck suspension. Nursing interventions focus on health teaching and support. Nurses provide teaching about bladder irritants and the importance of perineal hygiene to prevent skin breakdown. Bladder training techniques are encouraged, such as scheduled voiding and gradually increasing intervals between voids. Information is provided about incontinence products to manage leakage, as well as barrier creams to protect the skin from breakdown caused by urine. Nurses also provide emotional support to address the psychological impact of incontinence. The effectiveness of nursing interventions is evaluated by reviewing expected outcomes, such as fewer episodes of incontinence and effective maintenance of skin integrity. Nurses monitor the client's progress towards these goals and modify the nursing care plan accordingly to help them effectively manage this chronic condition and improve their quality of life.